Hello, loved ones. How are you doing today? Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you for to subscribing to us. Welcome, subscribers. Thank you for following us, supporting us, liking and sharing our videos. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button right now. The last time I did, I think the last video I did, it was on Uncrossing, and I said I will come here and I will talk about more about the altar work that I do. And I work a lot with candles. I love candle, you know, I love working with candles, doing candle work, altar work. I love it. And this, you know, I talked about that Raymond Buckland book. I don't know why I've never just come here and do it, did a, a review on this book. But I've, I've been working at this book for a long time now. And this is called The, the Art of Hoodoo Candle Magic. Uh, she also, this author also wrote Paper in My Shoe, which I did a review on there too. If you're interested in uh, writing petitions with your candle work, her name is Catherine. I can't pronounce that last name. I'm just going to show it to you. Hopefully you can see it. I'll leave the title of the book here so you can find it. You can find this book at Amazon. It's, you know, in, in other sites, it's very easy to find. A very popular book. It wasn't over nine bucks. This book has about 93 pages in here, and it covers a variety of things about candle magic, you know, working with candle magic. You know, I love this book. She talks about how to work with different candles, uh, glass candles, novena candles, figurine candles. She also gives you a condition work in here where she teaches you how to attract love, uh, how to... How to influence thoughts. Uh, how to bring peace in your home. You know, she just comes up with how to tie a man's nature. How to who do a man or woman's nature. I mean, she just goes on and on. She shares so much information in this book. It's just packed with information. I love this book. And then she goes on to tell you what is a lamp, you know, how to do work with lamps. I never liked working with lamps. I tried it, and it was just a hot mess for me. I just couldn't do it. I just, it was just, it was too much. But you might, lamps might work for you because some of our ancestors did use those kerosene lamps to do a lot of work. And though that work is good for somebody who got severe health problems and you have to do the work over um, over amount of time, a long period of time. So you probably wanted to use, you know, that's good for that. But I just, I, I don't like working with them. But everybody is different. Then she talks about fixed candles. What tells you, uh, what is a fix, what's a fixed candle spell? What is setting lights? Setting lights is when you put a petition or a photo up under your candle and, and you have a target that you're trying to reach. That's called, a, that's my first, uh, I usually do that kind of work. I do a setting lights kind of work. I do do fixed candle spells as well, but I, for the most part, I like doing setting lights because you get so much, I get better results when I set lights. I get so much better results because you have that photo and you have that, uh, <clears throat> that petition. So you can use that as an affirmation as well to bring that into existence. Fixed candles are, are good too because if you have any if you have any personal concerns of someone like hair, fingernail clippings, and things like that, you can also put that in that candle and do work that way too. I don't think I've had anyone's personal personals concerns to do anything like that, so I don't too often work with fixed candles. I usually work with setting lights. And then you have moving candle spells. These candle spells, you'll use this for breakups, or to bring love to you and what you do is you have these two candles if you're trying to bring love to you you will burn these candles each day and each day you'll bring them closer together as you burn them if you're trying to break up someone the candles will start off together and then each day you'll you'll bring them apart from each other so that's moving uh moving kind of spell work as well that was just an example but I'm sure you could there's other moving spells as well besides the breakup in into a tray Okay, moving uh, candle spells, and she talked about heifer lights. Now, heifer lights, you know, when you first start doing your candle work, heifer lights is everything because they're gonna boost your they're gonna boost your candle work. 
And what helper lights is, they kind of like tea, light, tea lights that surround your main candle, your focal point candle. So if you ever put out your focal point candle, you can keep these helper lights going and your, your work will continue to work because these are helper lights. I love using helper lights. I mean, I buy tons and tons of tea, tea lights because that's what I use. But you can use anything for helper lights. You know, you can use anything for helper lights. So... Uh, but I like using tea lights. It's, it's safe. They're in, already in these little tin, contain, tin things. So it works good for me. So you can use tea lights as helper lights too. So if you're doing any candle work and you're trying to intensify your work, uh, helper light, you know, try doing working with some helper lights too. Those work as good. They uh, work as well. Uh, then you can do burning candles in sections. She talks about that. Burning candles in a triangle, square, cross, star, a circle. I mean, she just goes into it. Burning candles on a seal or a seagull or psalms. Again, that, that kind of would go back to that other setting lights. That kind of would go back into setting lights as well. But some people like doing candle work, particularly with seagulls. Because that, that kind of intensifies that work so you'll see people use solomon seal and stuff like that to intensify their candle work as well some people do that uh candles by colors you know she goes by the uh, color symbolisms in candles uh timing your candle or lamp work by the time of the day timing your candle or lamp work by the sign of the moon how to prepare a candle for use in inscribing, carving, loading your candle, anointing and dressing your candle, you know, lighting and praying over your candle, praying over and sealing and knocking your candle, you know, and you don't have to follow any of this by verbatim. You know, these are other people, you know, this just gives you an idea of how you want to work with your candles and give you you know, have you to be more creative because you can get creative as you want when you're using hoodoo hoodoo is it about all about using what you have on hand and whatever you have on hand if that works use whatever works for you all right but you don't have to be use this by verbatim you don't have to follow uh what she says by verbatim okay uh and she also gives you uh some spells and condition work for all sorts of conditions, a white candle love spell to attract new love, uh, command and respect at a meeting with superiors, fixed money lamp to bring in wealth, green candle job getting or wage increase spell, crown of success candle spell for a performer. You know, she just goes on. She shares so much knowledge in this book. How to tie down a man's nature, how to tie down a woman's nature, uh, green devil money back spell. You know, she shares a lot of condition work in here. But my favorite part of this book, I think, I don't want to make this video long, but you have to, you know, you this is a must-have book, especially if you want to know if your spell work is working, if your candle work is working. You want to know how that's working because that's one thing, too. I, I've read a lot of books, even the Raymond Buckland books, and none of them really talked about how you know if your work is is successful if if your candle work is successful how to really look at that candle wax and tell if you're if it's successful and that's what i love about this book she goes into that you know you know you're burning the candle you have the faith that your your work is going to manifest but then you want to confirm it too you want to see what's the residual effects of that candle well how does the wax look and she talked about that when we burn candles in conjure tradition we often watch and wait for divinatory signs that tells us how the work is going to come out that is whether the spell will be success or not. Some of the signs we observe has nothing to do with the candle itself. They may be dreams, natural occurrences, or so-called coincidence, especially names, ideas that relate to those in the spell. We can also consult a form of system of divination, such as using pendulum or jack ball, reading and cutting playing cards or tarot cards, and poor blimimacy divination by means of the book such as the bible three other ways to get divination on the candle burning spells are through pyramacy divination by flame not every conjure worker reads candles but for the most part we do pay attention 
to the way the candle burns and can draw conclusions about it. In particular, spiritual workers who set lights for clients make a habit of noticing the matter in which the candles burn. So that make a difference too, the way your light is flickering. Is it black smoke coming from the candle? All of that makes a difference. So observe your candle work. If you're doing candle work, observe it. A signs of observed while the candle is burning. You know, you want to do that the way of signs up to observe and wax. This is where I get most of my, my, uh, you know, answers from is if I can look at that wax. That's why I like using free standing candles when I'm doing this kind of work. You can tell from a glass and case candle because it'll leave smoke and, and rings around where you can kind of tell if that, that work is going through or not. But if you're doing this individual work or you're doing spell work, I like to use freestanding candles. You know, that way when the wax burns down, I can look at the images and look at how the wax is burning and kind of tell whether or not that spell is going to go through or not. Is that is, is, is it going to be a success? So that's very important too. And a lot of people, that's what I love about this book, is a lot of people don't talk about that, but she talked about this in this book. And in Who Do Delish, she talks about it too. She talks about, you know, how to look at the residual of the candle burned and how to look at the wax and what what is in the past and what means the future and what uh, is the non-physical. So she teaches you how to kind of look at it too and read, uh, do a divination by looking at your own candle wax. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it, you know, the better you'll get at it. You'll get some idea about it. So just be led by your in, in uh, intuition. You may uh, dedicate a candle in a ritual manner, then pour drops of the melt wax from it to cold water, snow, or sand. The result hardened blobs of wax can be read just like a reading tea leaf. So you can do it that way too. Uh, or you just can read it when it's already melted down. Because I had a candle that do that the other day. I had a, a ritual I was doing and I was trying to figure out if I needed to work with this deity. So I did a, a candle burning to that deity to kind of see if it was okay to work with that deity. And I used a freestanding candle. But when the freestanding candle burned all the way down, it was in the shape of that deity. And so that let me know that, okay, I have success. I'm being approved to work with this deity, you know. So uh, you'll see that as well. And it's something. The more you do this, the better you're going to get at it. So that's what I liked about this book. A uh, very good book. Very good book. You should you should have it. She didn't go into uh, how to put, uh, do a petition so much in this book, but she does kind of show you how to set up a candle ministry. If you're interested in doing a candle ministry and doing candle work for other people, you know, she gives you directions on how to do that in this book as well. She goes into great detail. Like I said, even though this book is 93 pages, it's packed full of information. And she also has hoodoo classes, correspondence classes. I think those classes are like $104 or something like that on her website. They're correspondence classes. So if you're interested in that, you can go to her website, look her up and her website, it'll, it'll pop up. I mean, she got lots of information on the web. So you could just Google her name and all this stuff will come up on her. Okay? But uh, like I said, this is this is a priceless book to have. It's packed with lots of information. All right? Love this book. Get the book. You need to have it. You know, you're burning your candles now. You're not sure about if your work is turning out right or, you know, if you need to do something else with it, you know. Get this book because you need to be looking at that wax and kind of figure out which direction you need to go if you need to do it again or what action you should take. All right. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope this book review was insightful. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.